Welcome back. It's now time for our conversations. Tonight we have the Governor, uh, Marius Shea of the Kunene region, as our guest. Now, Shea has played a crucial role in advancing the development of the region, which is still considered by many as underdeveloped. We're excited to discuss the eagerly awaited opening of the Korihas Vocational Training Centre scheduled to take place tomorrow. This new facility is poised to revolutionise the educational and economic outlook of the Kunene region offering invaluable, invaluable prospects for the youth and, of course, the local uh, community. Governor Shea, good evening and thank you so much for joining us here on the mm -hmm. Daily Roundup. Uh, good evening, good evening. How are you? I'm good. How are you this evening? I'm very good. Uh, talk to us uh, about what you believe, uh, you know, the impact uh, or what you foresee the impact will be that the Korejas uh, VTC will have on local skills development and employment uh, opportunities within the region. I think uh, the importance of a vocational training center, we can keep on emphasizing about it, that uh, developed nations and developed countries in the world all over uh, were built and developed by artisans that have been trained at the vocational training center. If we have to zoom that down to Kunene region in particular, we are a region that has quite a lot of potential that is untapped. And over the next couple of years, whether it's the next 10 years, we'll be seeing quite a lot of new industries that will be popping up in the region in terms of mining, uh, in terms of energy, um, uh, at, for example, the green hydrogen projects that are planned and envisaged for the coastal area of Kunina. Now, for this to happen, and also different infrastructure that we keep on and continuously keep on building and improving in the region. For this region, I, I, for this reason, I think vocational training for that purpose then is very important and pivotal because now we have an opportunity at our doorstep uh, to upskill and, 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 and absorb young people uh, and those that are employable uh, to be able to gain skills, knowledge, and to be able to be then sent to the different sectors and industries of our country to be able to contribute to the development of this great region and the nation. So I think it is very, very important for us uh, as it would then be able to uh, provide an opportunity for young people to be able to be employable and to be able to get opportunities that they can partake in in terms of the development, whether it's in this region, other regions, or the country, uh, or the African continent at all. What strategies have been put in place, uh, Governor, to attract and retain um, highly qualified instructors as well as trainers uh, for the centre? I think a very important question. I think, first of all, some of the strategies that we have deployed is, first, we, we had, obviously, the biggest challenge we had was that as a region, we also do not uh, sufficiently uh, produce uh, uh, quite a number of young learners uh, to be uh, going for tertiary uh, institutions or education. I think that's one of the strategies why uh, with the education directorate, we have aggressively gone to high schools to speak about vocational training, to speak about the importance of studying. We are continuously taking different institutions to different schools so that they can be able to uh, take education serious and to be absorbed by an institution of this nature. Secondly, we have then also gone to all the seven constituencies through NTA to be able to uh, uh, educate and to tell our people about this new VTC, uh, how to apply, what are the courses that would be offered here, uh, which period to which period do they run, uh, and how can one uh, possibly be uh, uh, absorbed into this particular institution. Uh, thirdly, we have then also had some entry-level jobs um, that have been here, that have been, uh, restricted only for locals, mm -hmm. advertised in all the seven constituencies at the constituency office councils, uh, councillors' offices, and then obviously then uh, at the application level, making sure that people can indicate by getting certification either from the regional councillors uh, or the mayors to say yes, this person is an inhabitant of this particular constituency or town, in order for them to qualify for entry level jobs. But in terms of uh, trainers and those, we have obviously then uh, made it open uh, for all Namibians from all walks of life to apply because this is not the only institution we have in the country. We have all the others and 
in those regions, also people from our region are accepted either as students or trainees, mm -hmm. uh, trainers, and d therefore we have then said there people must compete equally and it must be based on competent people to be selected. So I think the strategies are ongoing. Uh, they are not uh, uh, having a sunset because we have put a lot of uh, train, training uh, courses that we still have to offer. Uh, and then also the number of people that we have to attract to take up the space that we are providing is quite huge. And all of them, we can't take them from Kunene uh, as we are envisaging a, an institution at full capacity that would be absorbing about 3,000 uh, uh, students, for example, to be educated and to be trained at this particular venue. So yes, it's an ongoing process. There are strategies and we are going to continue to do that. And are there plans to incorporate digital learning platforms and on online resources to improve accessibility and flexibility for students? Uh, excuse me, can you repeat that? I couldn't hear you well. No, my question was, are there plans to incorporate any digital learning platforms and online resources to improve the accessibility and flexibility for students? Oh, yes, I think so. I think it's now depending on the TVET progress and uh, how the sector itself is gearing up. Obviously, we have to evolve. We are in a, we are in a world that is constantly evolving. So uh, technology has started playing a very big role uh, within all sectors. So I'm sure that the TVET program as well and uh, activities are geared towards uh, obviously evolving and then uh, uh, incorporating the technologies that are coming forth uh, within uh, the particular sector. But I think at the current moment now, we are still just at the old standard uh, uh, method of doing what has been done all along. Um, and, 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 and I would speak under correction to say uh, probably they are probably looking at it or they are probably thinking of uh, how to make it more technologically friendly uh, going in the future. Talk to us about the long-term goals and, and strategies, you know, that you have for the uh, Korihas VTC to ensure its continued growth and, and relevance in the coming years. I think, I think the long-term goal really is to make sure that this center does not become an alternative but an, an, an first option for those that are also academically gifted to come in and, and, and get the necessary skills mm. they need. But like I said, we're looking at uh, not only obviously producing products that are good enough for the region, but are good enough for the country and any other place that they can go and go and then trade or do their work that they have to do. But in terms of Kunene in the future, like I said before, I think the most important thing is the potential that is about to be harnessed and the potential that needs to be tapped in now. Mm -hmm. And the industries that are popping up in the region require uh, a lot of our youth, a lot of our employable citizens to have vocational training. And this institution came at the right time. One of the things that we have now as NTA is to say, can you please make sure that at this particular VTC, people can also be trained for the new industries, whether it's oil and gas, whether it's green hydrogen, those are the uh, traits that we are looking at that must be expanded towards, and not just the traditional carpentry, traditional mm -hmm. uh, brick laying. We want to be able to speak to the future and to be able to produce so that when the region starts harnessing in that potential, uh, we have already acquired the skills and we have prepared ourselves to partake in the particular industries that are popping up. Well, Governor Sher, this is exciting, exciting developments for the region indeed. Thank you so much for your time this evening and we wish you all the best with the official opening uh, of the centre tomorrow. That was Governor Marius Sher speaking to us there on the line. When we come back, our conversations continue. Stay with us.